Hey folks, this is Kalani. Let's have a look at the Tychondrius encounter on Mythic Difficulty. For this video, I'm going to assume you're familiar with the fight on Heroic. If not, there will be a link in the description down below for you to go view that video first. For this fight, we had 2 tanks, 4 healers and 14 DPS, and there's a few differences between Heroic and Mythic. The main one being that anyone who doesn't manage to get an Essence of Night buff from the Bat phase will just instantly die when the phase ends. That means you need to kill a minimum of 20 bats every time you go into that phase. The other major difference is that when you break the brands, they'll leave behind a fell pool which persists for a few minutes. There are two main strategies to deal with this. The first is to ignore the brands and just hold six of them the entire fight. All you would need to do is make sure they are never within range of four other people and you won't have to break them. This becomes a pretty big issue when you hit the bat phase, as everyone needs a buff while staying spread out with the brands. Typically, to pull this off, you need extremely good DPS in the bat phase, so you have plenty of orbs and a bit of spare time for your brand targets to run around and collect them. A great tip for handling the bat phase smoothly is to give your top AoE DPS the first orb. We had our Windwalker Monk get the first orb, and he absolutely destroyed all the adds that followed, almost by himself. The biggest problem is that you shouldn't really be using any major cooldowns to get through the bat phase as you want to save them for when you get out with the damage buff and can start damaging Tychondrius again. The other option for dealing with brands is to detonate them as they go out, and this is the strat that my guild used. To do this efficiently, you will need 5 players on the left and right side of the boss. This allows either side to break a brand very easily. We had 4 players stack and the last player stand out slightly, so we can control when the brands break. We were usually breaking both of the brands at the same time, but if you have troubles with this you can break one side, wait for the Seeker Swarm to allow the healers to catch up, and then break the other side. It's always timed very nicely, though you would need to break the second brand before Echoes of Night starts. If you happen to get both brands on the same side, you'll need a player from the opposite side to go help that group break both brands on their side. We found this to be a little easier than having the second brand move. You'll need to stagger them slightly, just so your healers can catch up. If you find yourself without enough range to cover both sides, a melee can act as the non-stacked player, or you might want to consider the strategy where you don't break the brands at all. The reason you would want to break brands here is to have an easier time in the bat phase, but you only get two bat phases. After the second bat phase you'll want to use bloodlust and any major cooldowns you have left, and also hold the brands from that point on. Breaking them has no advantage as you won't have another bat phase to deal with. While Seeker Swarm isn't a new ability, we did deal with it in a different way. Just before Seeker Swarm goes out, we had all targets of the plague stack in a line from the boss, so one person could stand between the boss and the stack, so they could take every single Seeker Swarm targeted at the raid. That one player then takes all of the stacks of plague, so there's only one player to heal, instead of four or five. We rotated the player soaking between our Death Knight tank, our Rogue, and our Paladin. You can also use Battle Reses, Priest Legendary Cloaks, Shaman Ankh Totem, or even the Shaman's Ankh to deal with this ability as well. Rogues are the best for this as they can cloak the initial hit, and then keep faint up for the entire duration of the debuff so they're taking less damage. The idea is to either collect the debuffs on one target to heal, or remove the debuffs from the fight entirely. Anyone soaking and holding the debuffs should have an immunity to soak the initial hit without dying, and then strong self-sustain or damage reduction to help the healers as much as possible. The bloods are also something we handled differently from Heroic. We always held them on the boss until we had six. This also lined up with Echoes of the Void, so our tank took the bloods to the back left pillar and our strongest AoE melee followed him so they could AoE the adds. Our ranged group on the left side actually used the front left pillar for every Echoes of the Void, so the back one didn't break too early. All ranged would also turn to AoE the blood so they went down before Echoes finished, and keep an eye on your tank's health as they will be taking a huge amount of damage while holding 6 bloods. When more adds spawned later on in the fight, we held those as well until we had 6 bloods, and we dealt with them in the same way. We found it useful to start rotating AoE stuns with tank cooldowns while he was holding all 8 of those adds. When you get the Watchers spawning later on in the fight, they are always your top priority as they will start destroying your healer's mana. If the boss is reaching 10% or less, you should be able to ignore the next set of adds and just burn the boss. 
Overall, this fight is all about execution. If you decide to not break your brands, you need your bat phase to be perfect. But if you do break your brands, the bat phase becomes so much easier. So decide what's right for your raid group and what you can handle. But that should be all you need to take down Tychondrius on Mythic difficulty. If you have any questions or queries, please leave them in the comment section below and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Or hop on over to Discord, we have a server at discord.gg slash Kalani. Great place to come ask questions or just hang out. Remember to leave a like just below the video before you leave, and if you want to see more, make sure to subscribe. But apart from that, thanks for watching folks, good luck and have fun, and as always, I will see you next time.